Hey, we're Stanley Webster, Las Vegas Review Journal. You talked this morning about, I guess, the importance of having that morning skate on the second night of a back-to-back -back and come out 22-4 in shots. Just how do you feel the group responded? Well, I, we played well. It's probably our best single period of the season um, for whatever reason. Um, I don't know if it had anything to do with getting on the ice this morning, getting some touches and getting going or not. But at the end of the day, it, um, however we prepared today or the pl players prepared, they were ready to go. And that's our job as coaches, too, to make sure they're prepared. And from there, I th thought the game took care of itself. But, um, yeah, I loved our start. Uh, managing the puck, we made good decisions to get through the neutral zone. When we couldn't, we made good decisions to get it behind them and go get it back. Line changes, you name it, I thought we did a pretty good job with everything. So um, good, good on them. <coughs> Paul DeSantos, NHL.com. Bruce, William Carlson said that Tanner Pearson is easy to play with. What makes Tanner such a good complement on various lines? It seems like he, wherever you put him, he just does his job and does it well. Yeah, I mean, the players get a feel for that, obviously, on the ice. So I don't know if he's a communicator because on the bench you don't always catch that. But what I do know about him from now being around him is he's predictable. He's a left winger that you see on the left side of the ice a lot. He goes up and down his wing. He's good on the walls, so you can trust him to sort of win battles there and get you puck. So I think for a centerman, well, those are a couple of things you're looking for. You're going through the middle of the ice at top speed. You know, you want to know where your, your line mates are as much as possible. I think you get in the ozone, then things get a little more creative. But even then, you see him a lot between the dots. He's in the slaughter. He's going to the front of the net. He's not poach, hanging out for one of those elbow passes. That's not his game. Um, it is other people's game. We saw Jack score a goal like that tonight by slipping into that soft area. Um, he's more that direct guy, and I think that's probably what Carly's talking about. Uh, he's got enough pace to keep up with the centerman, um, enough grit, to, like I said, to win the, 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 the board battle. So he's got a little bit of everything that way, good enough hands to make those small area plays. So um, he's carved out a nice career for himself in, in the league with with those attributes. He's been on winning teams, so he understands that part too. So he's a nice fit for us. And I don't know where he's going to land at the end of the day. Uh, right now with Carly, it was one good game. We'll see where it goes. He's been good with Nick Waugh or, or Howie when he was down there as center. So um, like I said, been, been, been good with whoever really put him with. <clears throat> Willie, Jesse, Alex. Bruce, uh, Willie Ramirez for the Hockey News. Alex has eight assists in the three home games. He called it luck. I remember during training camp you had mentioned that his, his presence and just, you know, his leadership, what does he sort of bring, even on the bench, what he sees ahead of time? Uh, Petro? He, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he well, he's very vocal, and he's a guy that you, as a coach, you got to check in with, right, because there's things that happen on the bench. And he's very protective of his group too. So we've got to talk through some of them after. Here's what we saw. Well, did you see the same thing? Here's why we're showing video. So I think that part of the game, he's a student of the game. He's been around a lot, seen a lot of different situations. So as for um, the assists, I think this year he's timing his aggressiveness uh, better. And by that, I mean he's on time with his pinches. He's on time when he decides to join the rush, keeping pucks alive. He seems to be there at the right times and have a second to make a play so his teammates can read off him to cover for him or not. Uh, and he's making good decisions with it. He's finding the open guy. He's made really good plays. Um, probably hasn't shot as much maybe as, as before looking for those plays. We've tried to bake some of that into our, into our offensive zone play where we're looking for people uh, balancing that with getting a puck to the net for second chances and looking for people off net or tips or whatnot. So I think he's really bought into that part of it. Um, yeah, he's looked really good. You know, last year he played through a bit of an injury. Could be something as simple as that. His body is uh, cooperating more with him and his legs. And, you know, he's, he's competitive and, and, and physically strong in those situations. If his legs are there too, you know, now you've got a guy that can really impact the game. And I think that that's what's happened so far, so we've got to keep mouthy. <laughs> Hi, Bruce. Jesse Granger at The Athletic. I know it's only one game and you were up pretty big for most of it, but getting William Carlson back, how different, I guess, is it in terms of just the line deployment and the depth and just the way you can use each line, having a center like that back in the lineup? Uh, I, I like to watch him play, and that's the simplest compliment. I love watching him play the game. He plays it the right way, he plays with pace. He can score, he can make plays. He's on the, look at the shorthanded goal he scores, right? It's 3-1, they get back in the game. 
and takes a bit of the, the wind out of their sails. Just a hustle play. Um, so, and, and to go further with your question is, for three lines, you know no matter who's on his wing, you've got a reliable guy in the middle. So you, you know right away you're defensively you should be rock solid. Um, and I say that because the center does most of that grunt work for us in, in the middle, so his wingers are free to play a little more. Now you get a guy like Pearson, who's also very reliable, 200. That, that's, you know, the Riley Smith type of player, right? Um, now you fit someone on the right side. It happens to be Holtz, and I think Holtz, he'll probably, Holtz will probably learn a lot playing with Carly. And I think it could be a good marriage for those two, a younger guy trying to figure out how to play winning hockey in this league and still play to your strengths and score goals. So, But we'll see how it goes. It's early, but that's what he gives us. It's just a dependable line. You can play against anybody um, in any situation. <clears throat> and, and still bring offense. It's not like he's just a defensive guy. I mean, he's a threat to score every time he's on the ice. Coach, congrats on the win. Alex Eshelman over here um, with Channel 13. What impressed you about Brett Howden's performance tonight? Well, he's scoring this year. He's, he's, uh, pucks are finding him in, uh, in the slot, and he's finishing some plays on good passes, but he still has to finish them. And so far, that's, that's been good. Like, that's always kind of been, can he, can he finish those plays? Is he on net with his shot and when he gets opportunities? And he has been very good with it. So, uh, and, he, and it hasn't taken away from his physical presence he still wants to take the body in the four check he still wants to get in and play behind their d still part of our penalty kill so he hasn't lost the rest of his game to cheat for offense so i guess that's what's impressed me so far and maybe he'll be a good fit with hurdle we've been looking at different people and um we didn't know where it would land but um so far i think it's worked out well with him and uh, on the other side it's been pav for now and having a guy like that that can you know is a little more of a natural score i think it'd be good for hurdle to have both on his side. I think it helps Thomas also to have a guy like Brett that's played center that can cover a lot of ice because a lot of hurdles game is down low offense below the goal line. So when the, when the play doesn't work out, you got it's 180 feet back or 160 feet back to your end. That's where Howie can really help him. So that's the part of the game that uh, he hasn't cheated anybody on and, and good on Howie because that is his bread and butter to cover ice and, and be a 200 foot player. Now he's mixing in, you know, some, if he can snipe a little, well, we're, we're that much more dangerous. <clears throat> last one, back to Willie. Bruce, I think it was last night uh, with, I think it was Nick Waugh, he, on his goal, he, he came in, but he took his time to come across the crease. Carlson, Carlson tonight on his goal took his time. Is that something that you've emphasized to the players in terms of patience, or is that just something you can't teach? They just do no, it themselves. No, that, that's them. That, that's them. Listen, we we pre-scout teams, and sometimes you have a little more time in certain areas than others. I think the Carly goal tonight was just pure hockey sense, knowing they were in a mad scramble mode. Once their goalie came out of the net, he's like, okay, now everyone's recovering, and he just kind of waited everybody out. The Nick Waugh the other night, I think, was a situation where he found himself in front of the net alone and looked up and, you know, a little pump fake. And sometimes you have time to do that, and sometimes you better get it off your stick in a hurry. And Pav tonight had a, made a great play to Howie. I know it was a late goal, but he's in the slot, and he gets his head up. So do we talk about certain teams where, yeah, you might have an extra second when they're man-to-man -man and something breaks down because it's not layers where another stick's coming at you? So, But that's about it. We just give them, that's just some information in different areas of the other team, but that's on the players. That's just having a little bit of composure and, um, you know, and the confidence too, right? That that's guys that hold on to the puck the extra second, they're usually confident guys. Otherwise, you know, they'd be kind of firing at her. Like Corsi was in there late, right? Now he hasn't played that much and, and maybe the next time he's in that close in the third, he'll hang on to it an extra second and, you know, really pick his corner. But that, that I think, is just a little bit of being in the league and playing and, and uh, as I said, confidence. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you.